back post in there. I'm just centering this one with clay and I'm just getting it opened up. And get the base reinforced. I always reinforce the base on these or on a, a wooden kidney across the bottom. Just to smooth it up, compress it, stop it cracking. Just run it over a couple of times. Really sort of freshens that base up. Right, now I'm bringing these walls in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do quite a lot of texturing on these pots in there. And I'm going to various tools to try and get different effects. So when I'm making crack pots, I always throw them to the centre of the wheel and I can texture the surface and I've got plenty of expansion. I can really, really stretch this pot which opens up the cracks that are formed by the, uh, by the sodium silicate. I'll explain all that later. Right. So there I am, opened up and ready. The first one I'm going to do is just a simple, simple texturing and I'm going to use a grouting tool. It's just got a serrated edge, you can see the edge on that, it's got little teeth which I'm going to use to texture the sides of the pot and you can see the texture going in. So now I'm going to start moving it. They're really sort of building up in different areas, different textures. See the texture starting to build? That's what I'm looking for, a really, really nice, rich, textured surface with lots of movement in it. I don't want it just straight lines, I want it to move around the pot. So I spent quite a bit of time doing this and building up the texture. Quite like that. So I'm going to put a little ring around the top. This is just using a, a disc of metal that's got a little notch cut out. You see that little notch that's cut out there? You can see it? And we use that to put a little band around the top of this pot. So that band's gone in. So now that will not be as textured. And it's quite like the contrast between these to the, 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 the smooth and the, uh, and, the, and the textures. So I'm just going to put a couple of marks into this texture just to, just to open it up a little bit. And split it into panels with this quick movement of the tool. So there you go. So I'm quite happy now with that texture. I've got a nice thick rim. What I'll do, I'll even texture this rim. Why not? Let's put a little bit of a little bit of detail into the rim. So I'm now I'm going to use chemicals. This is a fresh batch. This is sodium silicate into water. It, I've got no set measurements, I say use it, if it's not strong enough, I'll have some more. If it's strong enough, obviously I'll just leave it. But this is fresh, so we'll see how we get on with it. I'll just paint it on, quite liberally. I want it to work on this surface. Like that, set for a few seconds. Don't need much, that's all it needs. Right, dry the hands. Now you've got to dry that sodium silicate. The drier your pot after this process, the more it will crack. I don't want massive cracks, I just want nice gentle cracking. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dry it a little. You can only work on the inside of the pot. You can't touch the outside of the pot. If you touch the outside, you're going to lose the texture. You're going to lose any cracking. So you've got to work from the inside. So you need a good wet hand. And you've got to make sure that the inside of your pot is wet. You want it to slide. Right? And I'm going to stretch it using this hand in this direction. I'm supporting my hand. And I'm starting to push. And you can see that it's starting to come up. And you've got to take your courage in your hand and you've got to go for it. That's 
all right. You see the cracks have opened up on that. That's really quite good. I'm very pleased with that. That's a good mix. So now I'm looking down the side of the pot and checking the profile. I'm just working it until I feel I've got the pot as I want it. Have my handiwork, very nice. Just a quick cut from under there. That's quite a pleasing pot. And there you can see the texture on that. It's really, really nice. I'm very pleased with that one. Side. You don't want this eating its way through the bottom of your pot. Right, one last look, see if you're actually pleased with it. That's alright, very pleased with that. Number one. deeper to the teeth on it so I'm going to put a back down texture on with this and I'm going to use another tool to actually work on that texture so you can see that going in that's a really really deep texture and I'm not going to use as much movement on this you can see how that's really really gouged into the clay Google 
sodium silicate you'll find you'll find loads and loads of info more info than, than I can give you right start to dry it dry off. When you get really deep gouges like that it holds a lot of, a lot of liquid and it takes quite a long time to dry these things. So you might have noted that I uh, edited the video so that you didn't have to watch it. Right, let's start stretching. This one will be interesting. Because it's got such deep gouges there's a possibility that you push your thing, finger through the side of this. But, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how we go. Right, so I'm going to start pulling it up at this side. Bounce and bounce. Right, 
quite pleased with that. It's a good, good texture. Put that to one side. I'm just going to tidy it up here so this is nice and smooth. about this is you never know what you're going to get you've just got to play it in. and sometimes you get really really nice surprises and other times you don't but we'll see how we go I actually quite like this this design it gives you a really nice sort of rocky surface a textured rocky surface on your pot Always the same, make sure it's good and wet on the inside. And it can start to shake. So I'm pulling. to bounce. 
And again, as he bounces, it removes clay. And you keep it bouncing, and you keep looking, and you see the texture that's starting to build up. And when you do this, for as long as you feel is necessary, on the surface and then we're going to play with it so let's start off by doing this I always put a background running first and then I start to move different speeds keep catching the edges and build up a texture nice flowing texture so all right just going to do the rim you've seen me use this tool before just a piece of metal with a with a, uh, a notch. It's quite nice. A little bit 
on the bottom. slice of cheese or in this case a thick slice of clay that comes off the pot right so what I'm going to do I'm going to start from the bottom and as I come up I'm going to turn the wheel so it comes across the pot and hopefully with a bit of concentration it'll work so I'm going to pull and turn I'm going to pull and turn Thin pot and cut clay when you cut straight through the sides, which I have. 
to set I have done and you've also got to make sure you remove all of these because I have thrown a pot where one or two are still being left on the side and that's no fun either so I'll tidy that rim up so then we've got a faceted pot I don't take all the bits and pieces off I think some will look quite nice if they sit the left on it and stuck but I'm going to just tidy this up side of this but but we will see and here we go starting to stretch I can feel the facets on the inside see they're starting to come so we really want to stretch this off the wheel. At the moment it's a bit hidden down there. enjoyed it and we'll, uh, we'll move on. Thank you very much. Right, so these are the coils I'm going to use to make my feet. These have just been extruded. I've pumped them through a standard extruder. This is the sort of thing with a, with a little round die in the end. You just pump and it splits out nice nice sort of round coils, a bit disgusting really, look at it from that angle. So what I do, I take these things, and I cut them up into section. Again, I've not got all the tools around me. I'm going to need four feet, three feet, sorry. One, two, three. So these are the coils I'm going to use. <clears throat> 
And the way I make my feet, I use various methods actually, but simply roll it out into a into a nice smooth coil. Take a little harp cutter, little bow knife like this. Finger on top, cut away. Take a piece off the bottom, and that is your foot. Done. Right? You make that into the shape that you want. So I'm going to do that three times and then we'll stick one on the bottom of a pot. Two. Three. So that's three feet. Right, so you've got to get it centred on that tiger so we know what we're doing. Right, the first foot. First foot was on this bottom mark. Get that in position. Make sure that it's central with that mark. You can see that. Next one. make sure you're happy with it before you start to fit them. That will do for me. So we mark these up. And then we cross hatch. Good deep cross hatch. I want these things to stay where I put them. slurry and it onto that cross hatching make sure it goes right into it take your foot put it in position and press it down little jiggle next position jiggle it I don't do any smoothing I don't do any tweaking I don't do any poking I don't do any prodding I just put it on press it into position and leave it if you start to mess with the feet you'll just you'll just end up making lots of little jobs you've got to tidy up after you've made a mess so put it on little jiggle that's enough, that's all it needs, it just needs to stick to your position. And then I use the stick to just tidy up the ends. It helps for you putting your holes in. One there. One there. And the last thing is the mark. A little bit of clay. Press the mark into it. Stick it on. There you go. Quick and as simple as that. I've spent no time at all. As you see, these have still got all the slurry around them. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to let that shrink back. And then when they're nearly dry, I'll just give you a quick tidy with a small tool. Job done.
So these are the pots finished and drain. You can see the texture on these, it's really rather nice. This is the one where I used the deep toothed comb and you can see how it's really really gouged into the side of this pot and created this amazing texture. And what I do, I, I treat these pots after they've been biscuit fired with oxide washers and the oxides take into the uh, into the little divots and cracks and fissures and highlight them and then I wipe off the excess oxide from the surface so you just end up with a really really nice defined crack on the pots that's number one how the, uh, how the texture differs depending on what tool you use and I used a little cut out disc on the rim which created that really really nice cracked rim and also it leaves this beautiful little f fringe which also cracks nicely and this is the point where I put the marks in with the tool just two quick flick marks which has created that nice little bit of pattern. Again, it'll all be highlighted when the oxide's gone. Really, really nice pot that. Very pleased with it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And what I'll do, I'll I'll put some pictures up of the pots when they're finished. <laughs> as long as they survive all the uh, all the traumas that they've got to go through. So anyway, thanks for watching. And again, happy potting. Bye. -bye.